Ghana is at a crucial juncture. In its democratic dispensation, citizens are faced with many issues, widespread discontent about the current economic state, the cloud of distress surrounding the Electoral Commission, and the rise in illegal and unethical mining, whose consequences threaten our very existence. As is expected, each political party is positioning itself as having the panacea for these woes. The Convention People's Party is no exception. But what could a party that struggles to put its house in order and lives in the past glory of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah do for a fourth Republic Ghana? We'll find out on this edition of Hot Issues. The CPP presents itself as the alternative rooted in the legacy of independence and socialist principles under Kwame Nkrumah, the CPP has historically championed policies of social justice, economic self-reliance and pan-Africanism. In this edition, I settled the flag bearer of the party with a cockerel as a symbol, one of few women in the 2024 presidential race, to explore what the CPP has to offer. I am Kemeni Amano and my guest is the presidential candidate of the CPP, Nana Koshia Frimpoma Sapong Kuma Kuma. You're welcome to Hot Issues. Wonderful. It's nice to be here. You're one of two women on the ballot. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Why should the Ghanaian people choose you and the CPP? Because they've gotten to the point in time where they need a different kind of element. We, we have the people with the brains already. We have people that know what to do. But there's something missing mm. for 32 years. The Ghanaian has reached a point where, um, and that missing element for me is what I bring to the table. And what is that? The human touch, the care for people, the concern about how the development uh, agenda of the human being for the CPP, the entire party was built on that principle. Putting the welfare of human beings at the center of every policy. Mm -hmm. It is for that reason that we insisted on independence now. That we knew that God created man to live in an environment, to be free and develop to your fullest. And that within you, you have the capability and the ability to use it. You must just use what you have. And so what we've seen in this country is not the actual meaning of democracy. Democracy by definition, for the people that brought it, mm -hmm. the idea was government by, of the people, by the people, for the people. Mm -hmm. to, to develop the people within that community, within that locality, within that country that is under that government. So that sovereignty that you have is to be able to govern yourself and your people within that. We've missed it. What, We've missed it. what, what gives you the impression, really, that the human interest element is missing from this country? What are the examples that you have? Myself, my children. My grandchildren, when I, for me, when I say myself, my children, my, I'm talking about other women like me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about not necessarily people that have birthed, mm -hmm. but pe young people that have like your age group and younger children. Those are the reasons why. You see, I saw, I lived some portion of my life here mm -hmm. with my father during the first time. I lived through the system and I saw youth coming onto the streets. No human being wants to be walking up and down in a scorching sun before he makes a living. I've seen my, I, I saw my grandparents who I would visit occasionally with hoe and cutlass that would carry me at the back going to the farm. Today, 400 coming years later within the civilization, we still have hoe and cutlass farming more than 60% of the nation mm. survive only by taking a hole in a cutlass in a basket 
so that they can feed themselves and occasionally be able to buy a cloth or something. I don't need to have anybody, no books. I don't need to go to Harvard, Yale, nowhere to tell me that in this country, the young people of today cannot afford a decent meal mm. based on their salary. Even if the person is making 2,000, 3,000 a month, then he's not either taking transportation. Right. Because transport alone in and out is going to cost you between 30 to 50 Ghana a day. Mm. So if you ask me, you just need to sit and observe mm -hmm. and care and, 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 and know that this is not where, where the, 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 the direction the country is going. It's going nowhere unless you are privileged mm -hmm. to know somebody who is in high places. Very well. I want to talk Otherwise, about Otherwise, you won't even get a job. And not only would you not get a job, you will lose money in trying to get a job. Because oh, by, the, so? but, I by mean, the time you pay for the application fees, and you pay five, <laughs> five application fees, mm -hmm. and you then get a hint that you might be up, uh, you might you might, wait, you might be accepted mm -hmm. and you need to pay for the medication, medical, and all those things and go line up in the scorching sun. You don't get the job. Nobody needs to tell you that this is not a country. We'll go deeper into that vision that you have for the Ghanaian people, but I still want to look at the ticket. You, you have, you know, because you're on the ballots, it presupposes that, that you have a running mate now. Who is that? Rayo Ganamanti. Uh, the, the lawyer. The lawyer. And the name tells you what it is. Mm, I see. He changed his name just to show who he is. I see. Yes. I mean, w what went into choosing him? For me, I needed somebody who is a grassroots person and has also what I'm talking about, someone that cares about people. Mm. I remember the time that the gentleman in Achimota was taken out of school because of dreadlocks, uh -huh. which I carry, my daughter carries, and she finished her PhD, like I said. And so I, was, I didn't understand it, because I went to school where we were forced to cut her hair, uh -huh. but the, my colleagues who had, were half cast did not cut their hair. Uh -huh. Today, after how many decades, we are still seeing that. So I was so impressed with him Okay. When he took that matter up I see. and won it for the gentleman. Mm. And having done a few more research on him, he's that person that the very people, people in the ghettos, everybody, mm. even the song of uh, the uh, Adan Salt issue, he's there for people. He talks, he uses his, mm. the skill that he has acquired to be able to support people in, who are vulnerable mm. in, in community. And if he had not done that thing for the Achimota student, today we will have a story to say. Because we all know what happened. I see. She got, he got the scholarship, got and entry he's moved to the best to places. But do you think that both of you are competitive enough? Do you have the political capital and experience for the presidential race? Capital experience for presidential. <laughs> that is the problem. Mm -hmm. Where we are 32 years from today is because we have the kind of people who think that to be able to do politics and affect people's lives, you must be in politics. No. Most of the people that we are going out with have only grown up becoming politicians from, mm -hmm. from school. They don't have no life experience. Me, I have gone through life experience. I have done NGOs and programs. My, I have dedicated my life. It's me that have made a decision that I'm going to contribute the rest of my life to support people. I've been a queen mother for 25 years. I, I, I have done business from day one. My father, my mother, business to my aunt is my cousin. So I know that what the, the economic order we have today can never and will not change Ghana nor Africa. At where I am today, mm -hmm. I know the dreams. People know me as somebody that wakes up with vision and dream every morning. However, if you don't have, if there are no systems put in place and you don't have, uh, like the American will say, you have to buckle your shoe. And your, if you don't have boots to, to pull yourself up, say pull yourself by your bootstraps, you must have a boot on. We don't have the system, nothing in place. So no, 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 no. We are poised and ready, more than ready 
for the Ghanaian. The Ghanaian today knows, especially the youth, is aware clearly of that eight years, eight years, another eight years, eight years, 16 years, 16 years of complete, I won't say waste of our time, but a direction that is not taking us anywhere. That is not the Ghana that you want. You know and I know. In fact, my friends who are into deep politics today, they know that to become a parliamentarian, what you have to go through to even get elected by the delegates through your primaries can never and will never make you be able to do that much for your country. So if you ask me, the preparation to govern this country, myself and that young gentleman who is ready to put service at the, at, the, at the center of everything. And for me as a mother, as a woman who respects people, I know we have good men. Mahama for me is an ideal person. He's, he's somebody I really like. Mm -hmm. My own father, Nana uh, Akufuadu, clearly has a good heart. But the truth is that the structure, the systems, and the policies that they've implemented mm. has failed. Not only them. I see. The so, system so, so, so we for have you, in Ghana, for you, it's system over the individual, uh, because it's the individual who must lead to change a system. No matter how good a person you are, okay. if that system does not change, you would end up with the swimming pool and whatever we have for the, our. The National Cathedral? Thank you. Mm. Good intention. You went to your room and you prayed to your God. Me, I don't challenge people on their face. Because that thing that we do is the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We can't. Because life, we are not just the material things that we see, the physical things that we see ourselves. We are spiritual beings. So when somebody tells us I'm going to do ABCD, I don't challenge the person. Right. But with all that, and putting in place people that he believes, that the people would have something to do and offer, it didn't end up well. Look at the girl I'm saying today. Mm. He put in someone that you and I trusted. I, the day I saw uh, Professor Prempom as the, the, the person in charge, this is somebody we all have a confidence in. But the system, he himself said that most ministers were not even coming to the, so, so, the so, meeting. So, so, yes, see, corruption, no, corruption. No. When you have deep corruption and the entire system is consumed with that, individuals must push and they must push to a certain level that they might be called names, but right. they must push for that and the system must change. I and see. that is the new order that we are coming up with. I indeed. So, so then here's, here's where, you know, I, I, I come back onto the system, uh, the issue of the system, right? You are coming to meet the same system. Yeah. I mean, so uh, if they were good people corrupted by the system, why should the, should the, shouldn't the Ghanaian people think that same will happen to you? Okay. So you, we have a, a similar story in the Bible where Christ was, went to a church. The church was not a bad place. It's a place for people to worship and connect to their God. But they were having, that was the same church that people were selling there. And then one day he got there and he said, no, 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 no. He sent the people away. There must be a time that you break something that you know is not getting you to where you want to get to. Not because people are bad, that's what I'm trying to say, but because people are used to doing a particular way. And you must find a way of, of, of truncating that, breaking so that they can redirect the energy and the focus to right. where it's productive. Mm -hmm. So we would have, you see, by the, the, by the nature of where we are placed today as CPP, because we are going to really make a move, uh, 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 make an impact, either we win or nobody wins and we share government. And let me tell you why. So at the end of the day, we'll be in power. We, the, the, the parliamentary will not be for us. Mm -hmm. So now... Oh, you don't think that you're going to win the parliamentary Oh, no. Majority? I'm not, I'm, no. Okay. We, we haven't put in that much. We, we had issues of numbers. Okay. We had issues of structure. So how many are you fielding for the... We didn't Jennifer? do much. Okay. All right. But... We will make the impact. So, so, you, you so you're, you're strategizing based on the fact that you would not have a majority in parliament. Oh, absolutely. So let's let, let's listen to the strategy. So with that start, with that system, the parliamentarian now is going to be forced to do what why he has come to parliament. 
to ensure that policies or things that come out are properly looked at in the interest of their constituents, not necessarily in the interest of themselves. Because if the president comes up with anything to date, let's say um, Bawumia comes here, he's the president tomorrow, and then he comes up with a policy, and that thing he wants to do anti, anti uh, the levy, what's the name of that levy? E-levy. E -levy. He says, let me scrap it off. Mm -hmm. If any member of his group thinks that it's not the best, that they shouldn't scrap it off, mm. he can't say it. I mean, so you think the parliament today is just a rubber stamp of the executive? Absolutely. And that is one of the things by, I mean by a structure. That is what it is. So with us coming in, and we're coming in from the Osaji Full Spirit level, the Ghana interest first level, from the interest and for me of making sure that the everyday Ghanaian gets the opportunity to live his life. Indeed, we can say that, yes, the African, the Ghanaian is capable and that we were created in the image of Almighty God. And that means that within Ghana, where we have been placed, we can still live our lives here. A young person can stay here, live his life here and live to his fullest. Mm -hmm. We need to create that environment and we will come up with the policies that will do that. And Your responsibility to is to... To, to, to scrutinize that policy and think whether it's in the interest of your people who have voted you, not in the interest of your party. And that is where Ghanaians who are listening to me today should not worry about the fact that um, we might not get more than 10 parliamentarians. Bring the, give them their parliamentary seats, mm. but make sure that executive decision, the one that really makes the decision for you, to decide whether there must be uh, an e-levy or not, whether money in your pockets must be taken with force because they have the power to, mm. whether your fingerprints and things must just be given to anybody at all. Those decisions that affect your schooling, that affects your education, that affects your access to aff affordable accommodation, right. as, as affects your, where you live and your, your living standards, how you raise it. Your auntie will still be that woman who can't afford ordinary eye specialist or would not be able to have a, a, the teeth and other things examined. To today, whether that is going to be the case, whether if you go to customs or anywhere, before you get a job, you must pay 40, 50, 20,000. And therefore, you must find simple, a quicker way of paying that money back. Because your mother borrowed that money. Your auntie borrowed that money. Your uncle borrowed that money. Your sister doesn't have a job. I your see. brother doesn't have a job. Very well. So, <laughs> and now we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk more about those policies. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is still Hot Issues here on TV3. My guest today is the presidential candidate of the CPP, Nana Akosia from Poma Sapong Kuman Kuma. Uh, Nana, thank you so much for sitting You're with welcome. us. We appreciate your time uh, talking to us today. But I do want to ask you, you have diagnosed a, lo a lot of problems with our current dispensation. Um, what are your top priority areas? When, when, we, when we... Yes. Um. The three, we have a three main theme. Okay. Ethics, equity, and innovation. The ethics for me is the corruption, the accountability portion, the lack of love for people now, the, the, the anything goes kind of atmosphere. We, we can't run a nation where we are losing the essence of who we are. But who I, are we? We are above the, the animal, in the animal kingdom, we are mm -hmm. above them. I mean, but so, who, who so, are the Ghanaian people? When you tell us that we are living below who we are. Yeah, I was going to get to that point. Within the animal kingdom, we are, above, we are here as human beings. And within that human being structure, the Ghanaian over years has been caring and loving. In fact... The whole nation, the whole world, we are supposed to be called the Aquaba state. We have that love. If you see the peace in this country, it's because of who the Ghanaian is. And I think that for some time now, I'm getting scared. Even when I'm buying food or anything, I'm not sure whether the person there is doing what he knows is right mm. or she, she knows is right. Because hardship, things are so difficult 
And to the point that anybody can do anything and say anything now and go away with because nobody is asking questions. You become a minister, you become a head of an institution. Tomorrow morning, you can own the whole of uh, TV3. You can buy it. And no institution is going to come and ask you, how did you get the funds to do this? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares anymore. It is now just how much can you afford? What can you pay for? Like, um, that, that, that's all it is. When you run a nation where people get, begin to lose their essence and who they are and the very people that they have been over the decades and centuries, what happens is that they become who they are not. And that is who we are in Ghana and as Africa. We've lost who, our identity. Mm. So I want us to get back. Ghanaian people are honest people. We okay. are loving people. And, and losing so, our identity is the reason why there's a lot of corruption in the system? The, the, total, the losing identity is the reason why we don't even know what is important to us as human beings. So I'm trying to do everything else except what matters most. You, you understand? So over the years, as Africans, we've lost our identity. We, we have to be like our former uh, ev evaders before you become somebody. So even if you are a young girl or a woman or doing anything, it's how, how foreign you are mm. that becomes how prosperous you are, how, how better you are. So connect the dots. So I'm connecting that mm -hmm. to Ghana. So in Ghana, if we continue to the trajectory, the, the path that we are on, where... Nobody is checking us and no lie is, is anything and anything you say doesn't matter. And what is important is only how, not how you have acquired wealth, but the wealth that you have. Mm. So I can come tomorrow and say I want to be the president of Ghana. It didn't matter where I had money. Oh, you, you, you are already no, no, saying that. No, no, for somebody else, somebody else All right. can come and say I want to be the president. At least I can show you mm -hmm. that for the past, you can Google me everywhere. The number of young people have come through my hands. The kind of business I've started and have failed because... I don't even know how to treat people wrongly. You understand? It doesn't matter. As long as I can show you wealth, it won't make, make any difference to you because in our society now, it's how much you can give me that I want to get. Right. I'll give you money the, the for me. The dots I want you to connect for me now is how an Anakoshia government will, you know, put the Ghanaian people on the path of self-realization. Absolutely. So that we want to work on ethics. So if I am the one who came up and said, I brought back like, the traditional this thing. Like, we use the Quran and the Bible to swear oath of allegiance and pledge to the nation. Yet after I pledge, I don't mean anything because I'm bringing the chief, mm -hmm. the, the IGP, I'm bringing the uh, judiciary. So when I say that, after, if I should not do what I've said, they should, who is going to hold me responsible? But I said, if I finish that, I would say the pledge in the presence of water. And I'll take that water and I'll drink that water because that pledge and that oath is for you and the people of this nation. I am saying it to the land that is me as an African mm -hmm. and I don't want to lose that essence. Now, when we've caught in over that with technology, we will fight corruption because we ensure that the Ghanaian has the brain and the ability. Put the Ghanaian in anywhere and he will be able to manipulate any system. The... It doesn't matter whether he's going to a PhD or not. He knows how to even sit in uh, uh, Uber or do, uh, down, uh, Yango or whatever and be able to manipulate the software and pay just a small amount of money. What it simply means is that within the current dispensation of the world, where IT and innovation is ruling the world, not gold and diamond anymore, we have the children with the ability and the brain already to lift Ghana to the next level. So mm -hmm. innovation is part of us. Then in the middle of that is what we call equity. The equity is this. If you take any hundred people, Ghanaian people you walk across here, at least 90 of them, is, or 95, if I'm not exaggerating, have nothing to do with government inter intervention in their lives. Nothing. So the Ghanaian is a petty trader by himself. Yet this 90-something people, our money pays over 70% of our collective money pays for the salary of the three, five percent of the people. That for me is no equity in building a nation. That is why Ghana is poor and will for, forever be poor and so we change the economic order. Not by giving money to individuals, no. By making sure that a chunk part of the traders, a chunk part of the hands-on, uh, what do you call them? Apprentices that have become somebody, hairdresser, whatever, mm -hmm. the farmer, 60% of them. We must find 
a simple, easy way to make them have access to the resources of this country to build with their brains and energy. So that is the equity. Our system would empower every Ghanaian, every Ghanaian listening to my voice. Born blind, can't walk, cross on the floor, very brainy, mm -hmm. not too brainy, it won't matter. Our system, called Ghana Bashers, would ensure that every Ghanaian has equity, has equal access, some access Very well. to so, funding. So, 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 indeed. And Nana, if what the economics or, or the economics of the day tell us is, is right, it means you are going to inherit, should you win, a very difficult you know, situation. How do you plan to raise funds for your government? Wonderful. It's like saying that um, you have a property in Laboni. That property, you have a mortgage on it. And you have no clue. It's a big compound. It was a one acre compound. It has a house in that corner. People, you don't know what to do because you can't pay for the mortgage. Yet, somebody sitting on the side like me comes in because of knowing how business was. Uh -uh. This property here, I'll come and mortgage it. I'll find a way of finding somebody who needs a half of this plot. I will not sell to the person. So bring money. Let's put something together. Let me build a structure. I'll have even my rent for free for now. I'll make sure that there's because of where I'm situated. Where Ghana is, the kind is not our, our resources in the minerals. It's still there. We owe so much money, but the structure with which we are trying to repay that money. It's not going to happen. How will your structure be different? In we are informal sector mm -hmm. in this country. As I told you, 90% of us are not in any formal structured system. Only a few percentage are in the formal sector. Any economist who wants to see why and how to make Ghana work would realize that all the developed countries have the reverse. 85% or more are in the formal sector, and only a small, a small percentage are in the informal sector. As long as you are going to borrow money to put up major infrastructural programs, i.e. airports, mm -hmm. um, overpasses, and all that, expansion of bigger roads, double, triple lanes, they are unnecessary. But as long as your system is such that you open your doors for free trade. You ask people to come in and they can do anything. You have not empowered your locals. If you do not change that order, your locals are the very people who are in the informal sector. So you don't have no data. You don't even know who doesn't eat today, how much business is failing. You don't know anything. All you know is the GDP you are collecting. And once you are managing it, they said you are a good government. No. So what our system intends to do is that we will give you funds and support you to put it into businesses, mm -hmm. corporations and cooperatives. Instead of government owning the food distribution corporation, owning the farms, we would empower the farmer or the farmer's son or you, the interested person who wants to go to farming, to be able to use the 20,000 Ghana we are going to give every Ghanaian. Bring 1,000 farmers together, and they are all over the place. Put them together. You now have access to 20, B, to 20 million. With that 20 million, you bring in your excavators, mm -hmm. you bring in the combined harvesters, you bring in the, the irrigation systems, you make the dam, one dam, one village will not be done because they want to do it themselves. And now it means that we are fading away the whole and cut last petty trade farmer. The farmer now is a corporate owner in part of a corporation and he is part of his farm. Now he spends only four or five hours on the farm and he has time to do other things. So the point here is the same for the fishermen. I'm not going to worry about trying to I will support the fishermen, but I want him to become the fisherman who owns the vessel that goes into the deep sea so that he can count the tomatoes, um, the, the tinapa, mm -hmm. the mac mackerel, mm -hmm. and the sardines, mm -hmm. and bring in the mackerel and all the things that we are importing. Because the sea we already have, what we don't have is the tools or the equipment that would go there and do the deep sea and deep farming or fish farming. How long 
long do you think this is going to take you to? The first one year. The first one year. Let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because our, all I need is 25 million billion Ghana uh, dollars. 25 billion. 25 million or billion? No, billion. Billion. 25 only, billion dollars. Only 25 billion. Okay. People outside today, call the names. Is it Mazagabeth? Is it, um, call the names, I have plenty of them. Mm. Is it the TikTok guy? Mm -hmm. Is it the WhatsApp, the Facebook? All the things that we sit down here and we use. They are worth more than what I need to change Africa, Ghana and affect the whole Africa. Right, so, so we already owe 800 billion, half of that money. Mm -hmm. It's already owed by Ghana. And we, have, we can't see it in the lives of people. This one is going to go into human capital, human infrastructure, human capital. I'm putting the money in human capital. So the payment period and the focus is on agriculture, the value chain of agriculture and innovation. And anything like um, accommodation, the things that would improve your life. This $25 billion. We paid for. You, yeah. you, you're going to borrow it? A chunk part of it is coming in equipment. I have a system. You see, when I talk about the farmer, only a small percentage of that money is going to go into giving it money to somebody to put in their pocket. No. That money is what is going to plow the land. That money is what they are going to own. So that, that portion of it, I would, I, there are companies outside who are also there, private sector, packed by their government, who also want to sell their equipment. They just want a structure and a system so that when they bring in the equipment, they get paid. Mm. You understand? So... How is government going to make it so that you have the money to, to be able to do the, put up a better hairdressing system, produce the hairdressing um, products that we use so that we don't have to import them? That's simple. The, the, the equipment that we can produce, uh, the raw material we can produce here, we we'll produce them. The one we import, we import, but we produce it but here. Do, do, no, no investor mm -hmm. is coming to Ghana to come and own the Galamse. The, uh, there will be no Galamse. We would end Galamse the moment we take, I swear that oath. Galamse is ended. Let how, me tell how, everybody. How so? How sure? How, how will you do that? Uh. Absolutely. I put a halt on it. Okay. The moment I take the oath, there's a halt on any illegal mining that is going to pollute the water. However, I'll tell the young person, celebrate and go buy a chicken because once I'm there, you would own the farm, the, the mines. Mm. Our system, the Ghana Bashers, which is going to be at your door, governance at your doorsteps. You don't need to walk anywhere. There will be government at your doorsteps. Wherever you walk to go and vote will now become your governance, government center. Baby, also, over Nancy, I got to Wabano. Mommy, Papa, or Miaba, that would be. I see. So, you plan to do some decentralization also? To the polling station level. Mm. It's already in place, okay. technically, okay. but nobody cares. So it's not being implemented. Mm -hmm. I will implement it. When you finish voting, Nana Fimpoma is at the top. You don't need to take that structure away. That system becomes a laptop that you go to that will take all your information. Mm, very well. We will know everybody there. No farmer, no farmer in Ghana, listen to me, will farm in Ghana and have to sell their goods again. So what, if you plant your cassava, okra, your tomatoes and onion, you finished. I see. You get paid like the way we've done with cocoa. Every Why, plant, the government will be buying from them? Everything will be bought from the moment you plant because of technology. Everything you've done will be uploaded by the, the people within the door, government at your doorsteps. Right. Would upload everything onto a platform which is already designed. And when it's there, it will go into the various departments because we'll be using AI. Mm -hmm. I believe in technology. We'll be using AI. And with that AI system, we would know that in the next three months, there will be this tonnage of okra production. So the gentleman who also has the Ghana bashers, they put together, before even the okra is finished, the, uh, is, is, is ready for harvesting, they will put together a system that dries okra, Turns okra mm. into medicine, anything okra, so that okra becomes something that doesn't spoil. If something is going to spoil, mommy, papa, tell me. So what for the moon man best say ya? I best say what I'm saying. You would never plant. 
and have to worry about how you sell the produce. You finish planting, that is your job. Mm. You have finished. You eat banku, I eat kinky. Let me no. find out how the kinky and the banku, the corn gets to the person who's producing. But not that it will spoil and reduce in the hands of the farmer after the farmer has spent his time or her time Very to well. plant. Nana, no, 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 we're going to talk a bit more, but we'll take another break. When we come back, uh, let's do the last leg of our interview today. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is Hot Issues here on TV3. I'm Kemeni Amano. My guest is the CPP's flag bearer, Nana Kosia from Poma Sapo, Kuma Kuma. Nana, so in your first one year, you hope to have raised $25 billion oh, to go in, into all the plants, particularly agri um, and, and industry. And, and industry, and industry, indeed. But I do want to find out from you there, there's a lot of change that needs to be implemented over that period. Do you have a plan for your top, you know, your first 100 days in office? What you you do? The first change is <laughs> debt. I'm sorry, I'm going to make Ghanaians. That is why I'm bringing governance at the doorsteps of the people, so that the gutter next door to my home in East Lagos, that opposite me has had sand and gravels piled mm -hmm. over the past two years. The grass is taller than me now. Mm -hmm. And you can't even, you don't even know who put it there and it's still there. The first thing is to keep our environment clean. I believe that they're throwing things on the floor and growing up in debt and growing up in homes without toilet facilities. Right. These are things that we should never entertain for I anybody. Mean, government parts have tried. They've had efforts towards it. Because they're doing it from a certain level. You see, when, what we are talking about is practicality and that's why I said it's putting human beings there. The people within the community are the people. They vote for us. Mm -hmm. So when they vote for you, for you to become government, where is their government? We are bringing it to them. So all the problems, that, all the solutions or the, the, the policies that you have put up there, you don't even know that it's not being done. You understand? There should be no debt in any gutter. No, everybody should wait in front of their property. It shouldn't be something you do it once in a month, mm. in a while. If you don't do it, somebody is going to do it and fine you. <laughs> you, you understand? So that the next door neighbor, whose property to me is worth at least two, one million Ghana cities, that has been abandoned for five years, and it's always growing in value. Yet, breeze mosquitoes right. has quarters there, has no toilet facilities to change overnight. So the government at your doorstep is the one we implement the first 100 days. Someone will say that, look, voting for the CPP will be a waste of time, a waste of vote, because the CPP at you know, this point is only living in past glory. Waste of time? We have wasted our lives by voting for these two parties. Today, look at the, you don't even, when you, I love koto, I love crab a lot. Mm -hmm. But the last time I went over there at San Cobra River, and I saw that, and I took that uh, two years ago. Mm. It's, been, it's been going around. It's not today, it's two years. When I saw the water, and I, tried, I saw the shrimps and the sh and crabs that people were selling. Now, if I put the crab in my mouth, even chewing it becomes difficult for me. You don't even know what you are drinking. Waste your time. Listen, gentlemen and, and, and people of this nation, nobody runs a country. It's government of the people, which we are going to give you by the people, by yourself, and for your own interest. What we have today is government of some few people, by some few people, for only a few people. And the majority of us are not considered. Mm, I see. Vote for CPP will be a vote for yourself, for your future. I see. And perhaps it is also a, it's, it's symptomatic of the fact that the CPP itself cannot get its house in order. And that's why you can't win elections. No. Let me tell you why. If anybody wants to know the history, the CPP, in this fourth republic, the party called the NDC had no base. They partnered with the Convention People's Party, who at that time, they have that need because CPP, based on the fact that it was the most structured with the best plan, a seven-year plan that only three years was, 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 um, was uh, executed. And within that three years, everything you see today from Akosobo Dam 
to the motorway, to all the factories that we keep mentioning, because they are our essence. Eh? Mm -hmm. Everything was done in three years, not in how many years. Mm -hmm. So the, four, the last but, four years... But that's the past glory I'm talking no, about. No, I'm making a point, though. So that four years, it's a plan. Uh -huh. it's, not, it's like saying that, why are you a Christian when Christ died uh, 2,000 something years ago? Or why are you following the principles of Christ or principles of uh, Prophet Muhammad? It's because, or you're a Buddhist, because somebody who this path, has a plan, show you a direction, and if you don't, that direction gives you a life of meaning. So that is what it is. Please, the CPP uh -huh. partnered with the, uh, the, the PNDC uh -huh. when they were becoming... PNC, uh, NDC, and used our structures. So when our father Akar was, was sacked from the party, the structures still remained. With the PNDC? With the NDC of okay. today. So we've been finding difficult to build the structure. It has nothing to do with policy. That is why we are struggling. That is why party, Ghana is not working. Because oh, but if you are struggling, how can you take care of a whole nation? No, no. I said struggling in terms of getting numbers. But isn't the CPP struggling? The CPP the numbers. That any party is about numbers. It's not about a, strong, a building. No, but internally you're struggling. No, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, that's not true. No, Listen, no, no. Did you hear the uh, shutdown, uh, show, showdown? Were you here? Which showdown? Which of them? There have been many showdowns. Oh, you didn't ones? see anything say that my mom is showdown. Uh, yes, I do right. remember that. Well, are, you, are you still aware of a, 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 an animal called butterfly? I am. There is struggle in every political party. Okay. If you don't have numbers, mm -hmm. it looks like you are struggling. Okay. If you don't have the funds, because you haven't been in power for a long time, mm -hmm. all our past ambassadors are gone, all our ministers are gone, you understand? All our parliamentary, my father was a parliamentary and he's gone. So it looks like we are struggling. But the truth is this. At the time that Osajifu came in to form the Convention People's Party, we had people that were ruling this country, evaders who were here with us. I see. And the country seemed to be working some way until he said it. So today I'm saying this. The people of Ghana, that is why our slogan is freedom, wanted independence. They wanted to be free to govern themselves. Mm -hmm. The youth of this country on the streets today, they are lying in, um, where are they now? Most of them are in, 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 in remands, okay? Mm. For, for having gone on the street to demonstrate. You think that's wrong? Oh, absolutely. I, I know there were excesses. I know there must be law and order. I believe in law and order. If you hear me well, I want things to be structured. I like things to be planned. But I also believe that we must put a certain human touch to everything we do. Mm. What was the reason for the demonstration? And why did they demonstrate? The excesses, the people who committed the excesses are mm -hmm. the people who might be held responsible. Very well. And given a, a, a day in court. But they must be bailed. They must go to all... This is they not the bailed. kind of offense that um, if they bail, they are going to run out of the country. So I'm saying this. It is the youth of the country. It is your situation and my situation that uh -huh. demands a necessary rethinking. Okay. You, have, you have put CPP here on the, because we don't have numbers. No, See, no, ha, numbers is voting. When yes, you but vote, if you don't you have, have numbers, numbers, if you don't have numbers, how will you win the election? Because you vote. Because we vote. Hang, okay, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Do you think that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah will be happy with the CPP of today? I believe that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah will be very miserable with Ghana of today. Very Ghana, and very not so happy with the people of today because he knows that we had he left us with a with a, with a solution. He left us with a blueprint, and at least let somebody follow the blueprint. Put the human the the, 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 the interest of the human being at the center of every policy. That is the blueprint. It's vision. God has created us. If you do that, you will see the answers. So then would have today, Osajifu in his grave is saluting and celebrating and happy because he's sitting here. He's no more in the grave. He's a spirit. And that spirit is in you. Any spirit of selfless dedication, any spirit of trying to do the best for the people is what we call a sadiful spirit. I see. Nana, 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 then it would seem that the party uh, that merged with the CPP, where the CPP left the structures for, is doing better than the CPP itself. No, because... So the we, NDC is doing better than the CPP? Because that's what I'm trying to tell you. Party simply means numbers. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. A political party is not a, a fraternity. It's been formed to go win numbers. So they are only better because they have the numbers. That is all that it is. Okay. But for Ghana, but for Ghana, you know it's not. Then I let, just a little bit more, right? Yeah. Your own party last year, you know, at the National Executive Committee or Council level, had voted, uh, you know, 
no confidence in you. But, but here you are today as a flag bearer of the party. Now, I'm not going to ask you what the Ghanaian people will think about that. That's not where I'm going with that. But I'm, I want to find out from you whether you think you enjoy the wide support of your party, your own party. Absolutely. They did not vote no confidence in me. That's what happened. If they did, I wouldn't be here. Oh, didn't they? Didn't no, no, the no, next, no, 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 no. In, in all the executives at the time, some resigned, you chose yes, not to go. Yes, so that, so that you, means that they did not. So, you know, you know, it's politics. And you know, in politics, there's something called propaganda. And sometimes, if you don't know, you might think that what you have heard on TV or see is what it is, but it's not necessarily on the ground. People voted for me. Do you think but, the internal wranglings could affect your campaign? Oh, no. Because my campaign already, CBP, we don't have a large base, and so that is what we're trying to organize. Mm -hmm. It is the Ghanaian, yeah. listen to me today, who is going to give CBP the victory. It is the person who is sitting there who wants an alternative who is going to give CBP the victory, not my members alone. Our members are not plenty. No party's members will give them victory. It is the people, the Ghanaian people, who want an alternative. Because, let me tell you what, CBP is the best party for you to join. No, but how, how will you navigate that without the support of your party? I am the chair. I'm the, I'm the flag bearer. You are. It simply means that I have the support of the party. No. Wow. I mean, based on the internal wranglings that have happened in the no, past, you do you think that you have the rank and file? The rank and file are the people who voted. That's what, this voting that I'm sitting here has nothing to do with the Ghanaian populace. It has to do with the rank and file of the party. Do you get my point? Very well. So everything, that's why I said what you saw there was propaganda and just... It was just propaganda. Oh, yes. yes. You were very unhappy uh, at the Electoral Commission uh, during the ballot order with the behavior of particularly the male-dominated atmosphere. <laughs> Talk to me about how you felt, really. Oh, I wouldn't say not too happy. I, I thought I was amused, let me put it that way, because it showed that the system we have in Ghana and the fact that sometimes, I wouldn't say all men, I will say some macho things. People like to show their, their strength and, and, and can sometimes go overboard. Do you trust the Electoral Commission? Oh, as for the... There is an, a system in place. We've been going through elections, and there's IPAC. And over the years, the Electoral Commission and the political parties have collaborated. Mm -hmm. Every issue and concerns that have been raised have been looked at. That I can tell you, and you, we all know that. Now, when you want to have, um, what, what we're trying to do, pick numbers, mm -hmm. and you put them in a ball, and you show all those things, and you say, examine it. And people examine it. And then after the examination, somebody picks one, and then it comes back again, then you say, okay, okay no, let me. I, that I, one is what I was just talking about. I don't, no, I, I, wasn't, have a problem. I wasn't asking in reference to the ballot order process. Okay. Do you trust the Electoral Commission to deliver a free, fair, and transparent elections, given you know, recent occurrences? I trust the system. So the way it's been structured, it can improve, and I will definitely improve it on the first day I take over. Because for me, those two, I told them before, those two structures there, there's mm. so many improvements that can happen, mm. especially on the day of voting. I would use more technology, the combination of the two, so that whether there's a presence of a no, third but, party. But, I mean, do you, do you trust the Electoral Commission? Is it being fair to all political parties at this point? Oh, I don't. I, if you ask me... For CPP, we don't see anything that Electoral Commission has done except the structure itself. That's what right. I'm telling you. Okay. Asking that the for every polling station, you the 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 your agent must be there mm. to ensure that fairness is in place. Uh, there must be technology. I there see. must be a structure. Whether my agent is there or not, right. once you are being paid, it should be free and fair. Okay. Thanks so for yes, I trust that. the uh, Electoral Commission to be able to deliver, but. The, all of us should open our eyes and use technology. Elections are won at polling stations, not at uh, collection centers. And that we must remember. When it is done, make sure we paste the number there. Make sure that um, the numbers that are counted, you have it in place. Mm, I see. Just, just one last one before we go. Is there justification for an audit of the voter register as far as you are concerned as a presidential candidate? If you ask me, there is a process by which you can audit the system. Right now, we all have access to the data. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem, you go through the process. 
to ask an external person at this critical moment and this time to come and audit, I don't see the reason why, because I have not. There might be, that's why I told one, another uh, uh, interviewer, no member of our party or somebody close to me has come to tell me that my name has been wrongfully taken from the registry and put here. Mm. So we should make it easy for people to go and check and find out. But as far as you're concerned, you haven't seen any an anomalies with the provisional voter register? Not, not that I'm concerned. Not yeah. one that is illegal. If it's illegal, it should be reported. Because if my name has been wrongly taken and placed somewhere else, that is against my will. But if I convince somebody to come and um, vote in my area, that is a different matter. That is not the one that I want to talk about because I don't have the opportunity to say that. But to say that people have been wrongfully transferred mm. and they are not aware, it's a criminal matter. W which happened? You know that. That's the situation in Pusiga. The, 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 the people were not aware that they, they were. They were being transferred. You know that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So that one, it must be resolved. Do, do, do you get my point? It must be resolved. It's not indeed, for indeed. So what I mean, what I'm saying is that if your people have gone through the PVR and still didn't find any problem in it, I wonder what due diligence you did because then you should have identified the Pusiga issue. How, 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 how could we have identified the Pusiga issue? Well, some people did. Precisely. That's exactly the point I'm telling you. That today, as CBP, we are concerned right now as to our grassroots, how we get people to get the message and to vote for us. Now, when it comes to auditing um, the, register. the register, it goes beyond just a political party. We've paid people to do that. I see. And they have given you the... That's why I believe in technology. They said if you want to find out where you are, go check where you are. So that's Very all well. I, can, I can say. We, Nana, we, Nana, thank CDP, you for we coming. don't want to just be populist, make statements because somebody has made it. No. We don't have the facts. We don't see anything. I see. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Nana Koshia from Poma Sapon Kuma and Kuma is the presidential candidate of the uh, CPP. She says that we do not follow the crowd unless we have the information. We won't be populist and say what someone else has said. We'll be back with another episode next week. I'm Kemeni Amano, and this is Hot Issues.